defenders stand and stare. Here is Ross McCormick, he's turned inside. Oh, brilliant! What a fine individual goal from Ross McCormick! Beckford, yeah. run up, scores! Top yeah. corner! Leeds with a last minute equaliser! Here we go then, it's Match Day Live, live from Ellen Road, you can see behind us, for Leeds United against Plymouth in the fourth round of the FA Cup, a break from the league, but a third home game in the space of just a week. Two wins on the bounce already, can we make it a third in the space of seven days? It's FA Cup, so who else would we have in the studio other than a man <laughs> who's synonymous with the FA Cup, synonymous with uh, scoring goals in the FA Cup, synonymous with January the 3rd, Jermaine Beckford, Mr <laughs> FA Cup himself, oh. is in the studio with us. How much are you looking forward to this? Oh, I can't wait. I cannot wait. This has been an amazing, uh, amazing moment, amazing time. And to play against a team like Plymouth, who have done extremely well, considering they've just been promoted from the, the, the league below, they've done wonders. You know, they're, they're a goal-scoring team, but also fragile, fragile at the back. I'm excited for it, genuinely excited for it. Yeah, it's a good opportunity here, isn't there, yeah. for Leeds United to progress to the next round of the Cup. Uh, wherever you are watching Match Day Live, get in touch with us through social media, uh, send in your, uh, your pictures, your predictions, um, whatever you're thinking ahead of today's game, we want to hear from you today. Comments, questions, all of that, uh, do get involved. You can follow the action with audio commentary. Bryn Law and Tony DiRigo will bring you audio commentary as part of your monthly LUTV subscription. It excludes extended uh, interviews and access to under 21 games as well. So, big one here. And of course, it is a break from the league. You know, it's four yep. wins from four uh, in January so far. One of those in the cup, but a break from the league. You see the players coming in. We'll look at the team news, but... You know, Ethan Ampadu there, ever present. He's going to be playing today as well. And for the players, is this a a welcome break from the the pressures of the league and the intensity of the league to come and actually say let's let's have a go in the cup? Um, no, not really, because you're coming up against a team that are in the league as well. As I mentioned before, they're they're a team that score a lot of goals. So there's there's naturally that goal scoring threat. You don't want to be knocked out at home in the FA Cup, especially taking into account it's been, I don't even know how long since we last had a home game in the, in any cup, uh, in the cup. <laughs> so, you know, there's, there's gonna be those elements playing into it as well. Leeds United, this team, we want to make sure that the fans go home happy and have a great weekend. But for them to be able to do that, the, t the team, the players are gonna have to perform to their, um, to their highest ability, the top ability that they're able to and give the fans what they want to see and let, you know give them that excitement that entertainment that that they're desperate to see after five wins in all competitions in a row yeah and we saw Daniel Farker coming in there just yeah. at, at the back of the team he sort of spoke in advance of this and we'll hear part of his press conference shortly about wanting to do well in the cup but certainly there's not going to be taking any risks you know we know where yeah. the bread and butter is this season don't we is that a sensible approach yeah absolutely um, but also look he says that as soon as he gets on the touchline and uh, in the change rooms before the game, he'll be saying to the players, right, everybody needs to do everything right every single, mo uh, every single moment right along the way. If we do that, we will win this game. If we don't do that, if, not, if every single one of us is not firing on all cylinders, we're going to find ourselves with a problem because this is a dangerous team. Um, so he'll be focused on making sure his message has not been diluted when it reaches the players and making sure the players understand what is required of them. As soon as he gets out there, you know, we're, we're going to see the passionate Daniel Farker that we, we've come to love. Um, but 
win, lose or draw, he's going to want to see a performance because the performance is the most important thing leading into, of, uh, as you alluded to, the league games, which are the bread and butter of, of our season. Yeah, Jorginho Ruta we'll hear from uh, later on in the show what a what a kind of fun player he is to watch at the moment <laughs> and the other night it was just, just fantastic. Uh, in terms of today, uh, you know from being a player, momentum's a key thing, isn't it? Yeah. Actually, you want to keep those things going. That home record that we've built up over the season of being undefeated at home, mm -hmm. heading in towards February, is a massive achievement for the team. We know Plymouth haven't won away, and we know... <laughs> Sometimes do when that, you say Rich. things like that, it's, uh, uh, we also know, I mean, you know, Ipswich have just been beaten in, in, the, uh, in the fourth round by Maidstone, you know, right. sixth, yep. sixth tier that they're in at the moment. So these things can happen. You know, that's going to dent their kind of momentum that they've got. We don't want a similar thing happening to us. No, absolutely not. But another thing that comes with momentum, the opposition team comes into the game. They look at it and say, wow, they've won the last five in a row. We want to be the team that stops them. However they don't look like they're going to be stopped. They look like a juggernaut. They look like they're full of confidence and full of goals and not conceding that many. So it's going to be a difficult, uh, a difficult situation for them to come into, the, this Plymouth side. But Leeds United, we're looking at it from a different perspective. We want to maintain our unbeaten at home record. We want to maintain these wins in a row that we've been able to, to achieve. If we're able to do that, if we could get to the latter rounds of, of the FA Cup, if we could get to the... Um, final four or five games of the season within touching distance of the, the team that's top or second if it's not us that's what we want to maintain that's what we want to continue to do and, and the only way to do that is by winning whatever teams uh, winning the games of whatever uh, uh, for, um Competition in front of you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll talk about the team news in just a moment. There are changes, as you would expect, but it still looks like a strong team, doesn't it, that we're, we're so. going to go into this game with. But before we do, let's hear from the, uh, the manager, uh, the man who we're hoping to lead us to glory in uh, as many respects as possible uh, <laughs> this season here at Ellen Road. Let's hear the thoughts of Daniel Farker. I'm very, very delighted uh, for Junior and also a little bit proud because I know that he had difficult, difficult years and, and was criticised a lot, but... I believed in him from the first day and I made it clear also in our first conversation that he's, yeah, one of my, my key players also in my, my thoughts for this, for this, uh, season because I'm fully convinced of his, uh, of his potential. I also knew about his injury CV and, uh, the main topic is for him to stay fit, to stay in his rhythm, to stay confident and also resilient from his uh, physicality. And, um, obviously it was also difficult for him because he was still out for, for several months and, and this after difficult, difficult years, but we always backed him. We were always believed in him and, and told him, no, listen, we wait for you till you're, till you're back. And, uh, meanwhile, he's back in team training since a few weeks and also back uh, in the, in the, yeah, competitive games is quite good. I think he has improved more or less from game day to game day. Um, yeah, the air will be a bit thinner for improvement right now because he is right now on a, on a really good, a really good level. We prepare this uh, game like uh, like we would do for a normal normal league game. So that's uh, that's what we have to do if we take it serious and and are professional. And this is also what um, I owe my players that that they are prepared in a uh, in a perfect way. So we are one hundred percent focused and and concentrated. It's a bit difficult because as you as you said, so they have played the last. Uh, game, for example, with Adam Forscher and Daku Giabi in central positions. They're both not eligible uh, to uh, to play. So for that, it's a bit difficult to predict. Also, uh, the new manager is, is not that long in charge. So it's it's always a bit more difficult to prepare for a game. Also, because I expect them also to make a few changes um, in the cup competitions. It's, it's a bit more complicated under these circumstances to prepare for this game. But nevertheless, we try to prepare our team in, a, in the most professional most perfect way because yes we want to go into the next round and i also want to send this message so if you wouldn't do this series how should i then uh, or how can i then expect my players to be 100 percent on it so for that there is not one percent less in our in our preparation uh, because we want uh, we want to keep going momentum changes quite off due to uh, sometimes illnesses or injuries or also sometimes you can't be always there with top consistency over 46 game days. So sometimes you also have a little dip in, 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 in form. And for that, you also need, need, um, options, uh, on the bench who then could use a chance and inspire, uh, inspire, uh, the group. And especially with our season, the championship, I spoke quite often about how tough this league is. For me, it's really like, 
the Premier League is the best league in the world, but the championship, the toughest league due to this 46 games and additionally two cup competitions and, and, uh, so much pressure because just, uh, yeah, three teams in the end are able to fulfill their dreams, um, with, uh, with promotion. So it's, it's a really tough, tough league. And for that, uh, you need, you need depth in the squad. And what, what the good thing is also with, with Junior, with Patrick, um, to have also a bit more experience back right now. So this helps us uh, as well. And uh, Ia Groove is still more or less in his first steps in English football, but you could sense also in this games when he had to deliver that he has also a, a proper, proper, um, proper experience on, on Bundesliga level. So I think to have a bit more experience also back in the squad in a still a relatively young squad is also quite beneficial, especially when we're edging a bit closer to the to the crucial moments and crucial crucial uh, months of the season. Yeah. So Daniel Farker there talking about momentum as we mentioned, talking about squad rotation and some of the players yep. you've really stepped up. Just taking a look at the team today, players that have come in, Jamie Shackleton comes back, Liam Cooper comes in to captain the side. On the wings, Jake Nantony, Willie Nonto, Joel Peru is back in the squad. And also a player who played on January the 27th in 2013 in the fourth round here at Ellen Road against Spurs. Sam Byram is well. starting today. <laughs> Mad stuff, though, isn't it? Absolutely <laughs> incredible. So he's there. We know that Dan James is injured, Archie Gray as well, and Pascal still injured, although we're, from what we gather, hoping they're all shorter term injuries rather than anything yeah. um, more than that. But that's that's a strong team when you look at it, isn't it? And I guess that goes to show the depth of the squad that we have. A lot of those players that have been sat on the bench and coming on are actually starting, but it doesn't really weaken us too much, does it? No, it doesn't. Um, but what it does, uh, what it does do is. Uh, it gives you another level of hunger, of determination, of fight from those players that have been on the bench that haven't actually been able to have the opportunity to start every single game. You know, players like Jaden Anthony, who I'm a big fan of, he's, he's, he's been a little bit unfortunate um, because the players that are in front of him, Dan James has been absolutely scintillating. Um, Cree Somerville has been fantastic as well. So it's been difficult for him to get in. Now, games like this are his opportunity to not only get into the FA Cup side, the cup teams, but also to force Daniel Farker's hand into giving him that opportunity in the league as well. Again, it's going to be difficult because, you know, the, the players are doing so well that are in front of them, but there's nothing like competition. I used to love having players um, every summer or every winter coming in and knowing they're a forward player because what it did to me it did it I wasn't worried about it not because I was egotistical big-headed or anything but I used that as extra motivation to push myself and propel myself into the places where I needed to be give the manager a, a, another thought and that's exactly what these boys need to do they need to make sure that they're constantly asking questions of the manager third game in a week here at Ellen Road that uh, bruising encounter against Preston last week, <laughs> like a rugby match half the time, uh, and then of course a win, a 1-0 grinding out that win against Norwich, which was really important, sometimes it is about getting the results really, it wasn't yeah. necessarily scintillating in the same way, but a really important game for uh, for Leeds to get, and, and you know, Patrick Bamford, just talk us through this goal, because this is a, a number nine goal, isn't it, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Do you know what, everything about what Patrick did in that moment was perfect when he, he you look at his positional sense there he doesn't try and win uh, get the ball to feet from Dan James on the edge of the 18 yard box because that's not where he's going to be a threat his initial thought his initial reaction is right let me get away from whoever's got the ball and try and find myself on the back of the the second center half and that's what he did really really well that's why he was able to to you know get around the back of the defender and, and win the ball uh, Patrick Bamford on the uh, starting on the bench today but just on that goal uh, we know if you're a striker you told you know head it back across the goalkeeper don't you because yeah. the goalkeeper's resetting but how hard is it actually to do that do you know what it, it all depends on the pace of the cross so with with Patrick's goal in this this Norwich game he used the pace of the the cross to his uh, to his benefit so all he had to do really was find a direction and that's not really that difficult to do um, when you're moving away from the ball to try and uh, create a little bit of pressure for yourself uh, a little bit of power in the header that's the trickiest part he didn't have to do that he just you know changed the direction of the, the header that was coming in uh, no Chris Somerville in the squad today but I mean he nearly did 
to them at Ellen Road what he did to them down at Garrett Road, didn't he? But <laughs> not quite. But we had, a lot, of close, we had yeah. a lot of opportunities in, in that game. And in some other games, you know, Norwich did pose a, a threat at points. Yep. You know, it might not have gone our way necessarily, but we did have the opportunities. We took the three points. Mm-hmm. And like I say, that's the key thing at the end of these, isn't it? Is making sure you've got the points on the board. It doesn't matter how it comes about. Look, it could be a 5-0 victory or a 1-0 victory. You, you get the same amount of points from those games. And the mo- most important thing is creating an atmosphere where every single one of the players knows it's us against them, you know, us against the world. That, um, that, that kind of mentality is what you need to propel yourself into a team that, that is a challenger for, for promotion. That's what we've got there. Importantly now as well, it's four clean sheets out the last five. And when you start building that from the back, now you're at the other end of the pitch, but it gives confidence <laughs> to all those players that, you know, defence starts at the top end, doesn't it? But still to know that your, your goalie and your, your back line, which is a changed back line today, and we know that Ethan will be playing a little bit further forward in, in midfield today, but yep. it does bring confidence throughout a team. Yeah, of course it does. Look, as a, as a forward, you don't have to worry about scoring two, three, four goals. If you if you've got a team that are defending really, really well and keeping as many clean sheets as that, all you know is if I do my job and I'm able to score one goal and my defenders are able to do their job and not concede, we don't have to worry. We're going to walk away of a victory. And that's, that's again, it creates that confident, uh, confident streak right away through the core of the team and on the bench as well because the players on the bench that are coming in, you mentioned Jamie Shackleton, um, Sam Byron, uh, Liam Cooper, for example, those players know what's expected of them today. And every time they put on the Leeds United shirt and they come out here, so they're going to be focused and they're going to be doing everything they need to do uh, that they know uh, is expected of them. Now we talk about the defence there, but let's go to the other end of the pitch. Mm. And the guy who's really bringing the fun factor to Ellen Road this season. So much enjoyment getting to watch this guy, getting to see his big smile as well. And we've caught up here on LUTV with the brilliant Jorginho Ruta. How do you stay focused game by game? There's so many matches. They all feel like big games. So what do you do yourself personally and as a team to, to stay absolutely focused? Me, I'm maybe the, <laughs> the worst player focus. Huh? I'm, I stay focused, but, you know, I always with the smile. So sometimes some people say I, I'm not focused, but I, I am. But no, you know, it's important because if you show to the player or teammate, we are not focused, you know, we can perturb a bit, uh, disturb, disturb a bit the team. So now everybody's focused, know what he have to do on the pitch. Yeah, you mentioned that, you, you know, the fans see you smiling, your teammates see you smiling, but I guess that's different players approaching matches in, in different ways. And in, and in a team, you need a mix of that, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm agree with that. And if you have a good mix and a good balance, it's good for the team. And if you have the same player, same character, sometime, you no, know, it's a bit similar and something like that. Just on on the pitch, Patrick Bamford's come back into the team. He's been scoring goals. Yeah. Not a bad one in the last FA Cup match, which I'll get your thoughts on in a second. But it's moved your position a little bit in the team. Um, how have you enjoyed that switch and how is it different to how you've been playing maybe a bit further up the pitch this season? Um, but it's, it's, not very, it's different because, you know, Patrick is a big experience. It's not like... Um, you know, on the box is maybe the the best because he moved very clever. You know, and helped me a lot because I when I was coming here, I see that it's not like from today. It's from I don't know when, but it's from a long time ago. So yeah, Pat is a good striker. I know it was difficult for him like before, and now I'm happy and we can see what he can do on the game. And I know you'll you'll play anywhere on the pitch to, to be in the team because that's what you want to be doing. But just with his goal in that last round of the FA Cup, um, you're obviously very everyone's very pleased for him. Everyone was, you know, just amazed by by the quality of the strike. But yeah. are you a little bit jealous you didn't score it? No, no, I'm not jealous. <laughs> but when I but some sometimes the camera have to be on the bench because my reaction when he score was unbelievable. I can I was oh my god, choking. No, no, it's the um, when you have confidence of when you are a striker, you can make like this. So, um, may you go like this? Uh, yeah. Unbelieve, unbelievable goal. Uh, the FA Cup next, George, you know, with, yeah. we're, we're out of league action. FA Cup at Allen Road against, against Plymouth. How much are you looking forward to, to, to playing in the competition and, and, and progressing? Uh, 
for me, you know, is the league and the uh, FA Cup is a bit different, but you have to stay focused on the FA Cup as well because at the end you can make something special if we if we go maybe I don't know. We never know on the cup. We never know. So um, everybody's focus, you know, is not because it's FA Cup. We the working is more or less, you know, something like that. But no, we stay focused on that. And um, yeah, it's important. The FA Cup is important for everybody. We never know what happens. So I think everybody believes on that. Well, you've already beaten Plymouth this season at Allen Road. You've beaten a lot of teams at Allen Road. How much satisfaction do you get for what you have all managed to do at home this season, which is not be defeated? Yeah, but it's like, you know, I say to you, it's the confidence. And we are happy because we see the fans happy like after the game to so make a more confidence for the for the support you know and uh, and yeah i think everybody get um a help from the support and uh ellen road is on fire every time <laughs> so uh, Jorginho and uh, joel peru leading the line today uh, jermaine we saw in that interview there we showed the clip of the the Patrick Bamford goal in the, the third round against Peterborough. Not just bad, as, was as it? As a striker, I've got to ask you, I, just, just be honest here. Yeah. Up, up until then, up until then, the uh, the FA Cup goal in recent history that everyone talks about is yours, of course, at Old, Old Trafford. Yeah. Now we've got another one, mate. It's not all it's not all the Jermaine Beckford show anymore. We've got, we got the Pat it's Bamford goal. It's never been the Jermaine Beckford show. <laughs> You're trying to kill me off. This is ridiculous. Unbelievable. This is what I have to work with. Bring Emma back. <laughs> How, Where is Emma? How good? <laughs> uh, she'd be saying the same thing. I can assure you. How how good has Pat been, first and foremost? You know, coming in and making a real difference to the team when he's come in. Do you know what? It's it's been amazing. The the form that Patrick's found himself in in recent times, especially. He's had a tricky time in terms of his his injury troubles, in terms of his form. You know, being out of the team with the the other strikers in the team doing really really well. Joel Peru being fantastic. This goal here is, is unbelievable. <sighs> bringing it down on his chest he actually thought the defender wasn't on the, uh, he thought the defender was on his feet still and, and still relatively close to him so he thought he'd try and shoot nice and early and catch the defender off guard but as it turns out everything about that goal was unbelievable I, I flipping love it the, the, the pass from um, Ethan Ampadu the first touch the finish but what I was getting at is Patrick's been in a difficult situation as of recent times you know and He's managed to buy this time. He's had a couple of conversations with the, managing, the, the manager, the staff, the other players around him as well, to let them know and, and help them all realise, look, he's a, he's a threat in front of goal if you put the ball in these areas. This is the goal I was talking about earlier. Look at Patrick's movement. That's a player that's confident, he's self-assured, he, he knows what to, what to do and he knows what his teammate's going to do as well. Great cross from Dan James, lovely finish. And it's, it's bringing the... the um, self-confidence back and that's something that, that he's lacked in recent times and I'm, I'm over the moon absolutely over the moon that he's, he's back and he's scoring goals and he's, he's helping the team out in a positive way Yeah well he might have an option uh, to come on from the bench and make an impact yeah. today of course Plymouth are the opposition today they have not won away from home so far this season which is quite a stretch to go through of course it's they incredible. came here earlier in the season uh, we took a 2-0 lead and then in the end it was 2-1 and they did show especially on the counter that they could cause a threat when they were here earlier in uh, back in November yeah look they're, they're a side that scored goals galore um, they've scored something like 47 I think it is goals this season they've got a, a couple of players that are in double figures already you know they've, they've got um, Morgan Whitaker who's their hitman, he's on 15 goals. They've got Ryan Hardy, he's got 10 goals. Like they got goals in them, and that's not. But that's not the place. That's not the area they need to, to be concerned or, or worried about. It's more defensively. The defensive areas are where they they find themselves suscept uh, susceptible to to losing out. And situations like this, they find themselves in in problems of their own doing. Great calm, composed finish there as well from Joel Peru. And if they can take those elements out of their game then they'll, they'll do really well this season. Obviously, I mentioned before, they, this is their first season back in the, uh, in the championship. They, they've just recently been promoted, but it's moments like that that are going to make their stay short-lived, you know, if they, if they continue doing that. They did show a, a threat, like I say, on the, the counter there. And, they, you know, came in, tried to play a bit of football as well, which a lot of teams haven't done when they've come here to Ellen Road. So credit to them for doing that. And you'd expect in a cup game as well, I mean, look, let's be honest, I'm sure, same for Plymouth, same for us. I don't think 
I'd rather teams want to draw at the end of this and a, and a replay. You want to go out and try and win this game. Yeah, you want the win or you want the loss in terms of um, adding another game to an already very busy fixture uh, schedule. So I'm pretty sure both sides are going to absolutely 100% go for it because that's what both teams have done all season. I, I can't see any team playing any either side playing any differently to that. Quick score prediction. Oh, four nil leads. Four nil leads. He's got Close game. Nil, he's got four nil leads. Did not see that coming. I'm not going to lie uh, No, you. no, no. But we'd love that. Uh, right. Um, we have um, audio commentary for our LUTV subscribers, of course, coming up with the brilliant Bryn Law and Tony Dorigo. Before that, back in the team, let's get the thoughts of Jamie Shackleton. Jamie, it's been a really good start to 2024. Are you all keen to keep that run going today in the FA Cup? Yeah, of course. You know, it's another chance, um, another game to keep the, the little run that we've got going um, and yeah we're excited to you know next challenge next game and hopefully yeah we'll keep that going it's been a long time to wait for a home tie in this competition hasn't it yeah I saw something saying it was like was it 13 14 years or something like that um, so yeah nice to get a nice to get a tie at home and you know that might that might help us yeah Saturday three o'clock kick off all the traditional elements for the game you'll hope that there'll be a really good atmosphere around it as well to sort of help you ho help you home yeah, I think there will be. Um, you know, sold out again here. So, like I said before, I think that will definitely, um, definitely help us out there today. And um, nice, to, nice to have a home tie. Yeah, played them fairly recently here. Does that make any difference to the way today's game goes? No. Um, I mean, played against them. Know their style, and uh, you know, got got good personnel, and we know kind of what to expect. So that could help a little bit. But um, you know, it's a different game, and we're we're going to do what we can to to win out there today. Yeah. seen that long since we were last here does it at Ellen Road in fact Tony and I have been basically camping on the gantry this week six day spell three home fixtures this is the final one of them and we switch from championship to FA Cup action for this one this afternoon a Saturday 3 p.m. kickoff so all the traditional elements that are so often missing from the competition around about these stages these days Leeds United get to enjoy it all and a tie where they've been drawn at home as well for the first time in a long time so they have to make the most of that their opposition comes from the same division indeed as you've just been seeing in the build up there if you've been watching Plymouth Argyle were here in a championship match just a couple of months ago close game Leeds looked good for their half time Plymouth battle back in the second half and the one or two nervy moments after that Wayne goal in the closing stages. But Leeds at home, and after such a good start to the new year, I think there'll be an expectation that it's Leeds who should progress. But when is the FA Cup ever that simple? Ask it, Switch. That's a good point. <laughs> but certainly the home draw, that shocked us, didn't it? It really did. 13 in a row away from home, finally get one at home. But the FA Cup, I must admit, if you... You keep winning, you have more games, that to me says you're playing well and you've got momentum. And we've really got momentum in 2024, won every game so far. So Bryn, let's carry it on. Absolutely. Six changes to the starting 11. We are anticipating quite a bit of change around for this one. Uh, a couple of enforced changes, obviously, with the absence of Archie Gray and Dan James with injury. Um, so there are five still in the team that began the game in midweek. Plymouth have also made a number of changes to their side. They've also had problems in terms of what they have to change because uh, Daco JB, who's on loan from Leeds, is not able to play against Leeds United. Adam Forshaw, who's arrived recently, is cupped 